you know, an, another resource tool that we have with the University of Tennessee is, is with our Ag and Resource Economics page. We also have the budgets available. So we have, um, if I, you know, move my cursor through just to kind of show, when you pull up this uh, page from the website and you just click on livestock budgets, we'll have budgets for cow calf operators as well as, as stocker operators as well. Um, we've got row crops that are up to date, tobacco, uh, some vegetable ones as well, as well as forage budgets. So when we talk about a budget or an enterprise budget, it is just one part of a whole farm plan. So when you have a farm, so to speak, um, you know, you have different enterprises. The cow calf side would be one enterprise. Uh, if you raise hay or crops, you know, those would be individual enterprises as well. This way you're able to have it, when you have the cost broke down into budgets based on enterprises, you'd be able better able to analyze each um, enterprise to see which one is making money, which is more efficient, and maybe you can focus on one more or the other or uh, eliminate an enterprise that doesn't really add value to your whole farm plan. So we look at the input cost, we look at um, the revenues minus cost and returns, and we have those broke down further as far as the, the cost categories. Um, variable costs or, or operating costs, those would just be entitled, you know, related to what is kind of used up over the course of the year. Your fixed or ownership cost, um, that would be more in your uh, um, equipment, uh, land cost, or, or, uh, or overhead cost as well. Another um, cost that we use, especially with our UT budgets, not all uh, university budgets will have this included, but it's the opportunity cost. And the opportunity cost uh, that we include is also the owner la labor. Oftentimes when uh, um, farmers are, are uh, kind of planning or looking over their costs and expenses for the year, they kind of leave out their labor cost. Well, this we feel is an opportunity cost that needs to be included to make sure that that owner is getting paid and, and really to determine the true, true cost of that enterprise. So when we kind of break it down further, just to kind of show an example of an enterprise budget here as far as on the cow-calf side, uh, this is from our university budgets. We just have it simply broke down with revenue. And as you can see, we add on the revenue side, the call cows or the cold cows that are sold over the course of the year. Uh, we break it down further with heifers, the heifer calves that are sold, and the steer cost. So as far as when we bring that all together, the, the whole idea is to kind of break it down as far as the revenue per cow and also on the herd. So in this example, we're using a herd of 50 cows, but we also have a broke down per cow basis. So there's a percentage of the call income, heifer income, and the steer income that are assigned to each individual animal. So as we look here, we see that the revenue side is around about $643 in this example for a cow. And then we break it down as far as on the expense side with the variable expenses. We look at, um, you know, pasture production. Um, you know, we dedicate two acres per cow in this example, and we include all the cost in that enterprise as far as the pasture, establishment costs for any fertilizer that's used, chemicals, bush hogging, et cetera. Same thing on the, on the hay production. If you're producing your own hay, uh, we look at it further as far as, you know, what is a cow gonna consume over the course of the year as far as supplemental hay. And we determined that to be a little bit less than an, an acre. So again, that cost per acre is its factor in as well. And you can see the adjustments per, per head here. Um, uh, we have other costs, of course, as far as supplemental feed, uh, vet med, and other expenses as well. And here's, I just want to kind of point out on the labor side, we want to include that as that opportunity cost as a figure about eight hours per head per year at a rate of $10. Uh, you know, an individual producer can put their own charge in there as well. So when we look at the production side, um, we're at $593. And as we move it a little bit further into uh, adding in interest, 
Now that's another thing that we can look at it as an opportunity cost, which will give us about seventeen dollars um, added to a cost of of um, that operation, and then including marketing. So you know when that animal is sold, there's going to be a charge, whether it's a sale barn through reliance sale or a video sale as well. Oh, so we got kind of got away there. So when we kind of have a look down and broken down, we'll see our variable uh, return to variable expenses is only about $8 when everything is factored in. Now, second part of the UT budget, we also have the fixed expenses. Now, we do factor, you know, with, with this example, we have all costs factored in. So we're looking at livestock facilities. Uh, this would be the squeeze chute. It would be the uh, um, holding pens that type of thing included. Uh, you can see that uh, per head, the uh, hay equipment or and uh, tractors, balers, those type of things, it's broke down per head. So if you add in all those costs on only a 50 cow herd, you can see that, that uh, the fixed costs really take over. Now, a lot of that cost would be eliminated on many of these uh, producers that I work with. They don't have that old equipment or they may have really used old equipment that's been paid off so those expenses would be much lower it, overall. So it kind of gives us you know, a, a fixed expense here, about $340 for a total expenses of per head, about 976. So you can see how, even though that may be quite high for most producers, um, however, when you start looking at some of the uh, smaller scale producers, by just having some of the extra equipment, you can see how those cost structures kind of get displaced. However, just going back to our variables, you can just see what it costs per year just to kind of maintain that cow and hitting those, those um, that revenue source to cover those costs can be uh, difficult in a situation like we have today. So one way that we kind of evaluate, um, you know, the herd is also on, on the efficiency of the whole cow herd. Um, you know, that'll be how many get pregnant, um, you know, how many we have win that calf. In a way with the, the, the beef gauge, we could take the numbers of the individual, compare it to the state average, and to see where they're at. And maybe in this way, they can set that benchmark, compare it over time, to see if those adjustments that they may make, whether it's in nutrition or in genetics, if those are paying off and, and going forward. So one of those measures that we start off on the, on the beef gauge is the number of exposed females in the cow herd. So this is the number of mature cows and any replacement heifers that ex get exposed to a bull or AI at the beginning of breeding season. So each fem female has that potential to conceive and raise that calf. So in the, in the example today, a lot of times we use say 50 cows or 50 cows and, and heifers that are exposed to a bull. Now you do need to make an adjustment over time. So you need to uh, adjust that number of 50 lower if you sell um, females out of that herd during the breeding season or after um, you determine which ones are pregnant, whether you're selling a cow-calf pair or, or a pregnant female, you wanna lower that down. So, you, so if you sell say uh, five, uh, Pregnant females, you want to lower that to, to 45 to get the, a true adjustment of, of your animal, of, of the herd. Now, if you bring in a pregnant female uh, to add to your herd or a group of, say, five, you want to increase that number to 55 to have that true uh, determinant factor. Now, one thing to, to take into consideration here. After the breeding season, you determine that you have some open heifers or you have open cows and you sell those. Say if you sell, again, uh, a figure of five, you do, you do not want to adjust the number. You still want to keep that number of 50 because that's your true number that we're exposed. So some of the factors that we will use, is the pregnancy percentage, usually determined 45 to 90 days at the end of the breeding season just the number of uh, confirmed pregnancies divided by the exposed females. Um, the goal here is about 95%. 
And again, you know, having these these benchmark goals is a, is a way that really determine efficiency of not only the herd but also individual animals. For instance, when you look at say the calving intervals, you know, you have that animal that kind of has a calf every year within that 365 days compared it to one that's a little uh, late to get bred back, you know, whether it's two, three months. And when you look at it over a life of uh, say six calves, or in this case, five years from the first time that both those individuals calve to five years later, you can see how that extended um, time it takes for that second one to get bred back can have a huge difference on the overall efficiency. You know, you're looking at six calves for that one cow that is bred back or has that calf every year versus only five for the one that does take a little bit more time to get bred back. So, you know, again, those are the ones that you want to kind of call out of your herd. You want to have a more, again, condensed breeding season, a calving season to allow you to, to work with your animals a little bit more efficiency, efficiently, whether it's going to be when you, um, vaccinate, uh, wean, and sell those animals later on. Now the calving percentage uh, is nothing more than just the number of calves that are born versus exposed females. And in many times that'll be within that range you know, before you use that 95%. If that's the case, uh, it should be around you know, 93, 94%. Now, if you have twins within the herd, it can be even higher. It can even be close to 100% calving percentage. Uh, weaning percentage is where, you know, if you have calves that uh, uh, die during the uh, season, of course, that, that's going to, you know, lower uh, that total. Uh, you know, we see this, you know, last year and even this past winter where we have a lot of rain, a lot of mud. Uh, it's difficult to, um, you know, find all those calves at time and kind of keep them healthy. Uh, the goal here again is 90% um, across the herd. Oftentimes, when we kind of look at individual operations, that could be anywhere from 75 to 80%. Now, another thing to kind of consider is too is, is when you're looking at a weaning percentage, uh, 95 or 90%, you know, bringing that up to 95 or 100% may not be uh, cost efficient. Um, you know, you know, if you're going to have to put more time, expense to increase that, it may not be efficient for that operation. We always have to kind of take in fact, take into those considerations as well when we're, we're planning um, uh, budgeting for an operation. So when we look at uh, measuring performance of a commercial beef cattle herd, and we look at, at those percentages and we kind of see what a difference it kind of makes between say two 30 cow herds. And where percentages really takes over, uh, you can have two average weighing weights. You can have herd A being at 550 pounds versus uh, herd B at only 475. Uh, there's a lot of factors that can come into play. It could be genetics, it could be, um, uh, you know, if you're treat feeding or, you know, the pasture conditions of the two herds. However, when you look at the weaning percentages, say if herd A is only at 74%, herd B is at 90%, we can take a look at what a difference it really makes to the overall herd. So you have five more wean in herd B. And when you look at the total of pounds weaned, you can see it's probably around 700 extra pounds in herd B, even though those calves were 75 pounds less at, on average. More importantly, when we look at uh, wean pounds per exposed cows, you can see that again, it comes down to herd B is, is uh, weaning an extra 25 per, uh, pounds per cow. So again, when you break down those efficiencies, you can see that not only, you know, you can focus on prices, you can focus on weaning the weights, but percentages uh, really takes over probably has a greater overall impact of your herd than, than anything else in an operation. Further, when we kind of look at um, um, weaning percentages, 
if we, and if, say we look at an example of 500 pounds, um, at 100%, of course, it can be 500 pounds per exposed female. For every 10% decrease, you can see a 50 pound decrease. So if we you know, kind of look at maybe a current marketing situation, maybe $1.50 a pound for a five weight animal, uh, you can see that's gonna be a difference about $75 per expo uh, female in the herd. So every female uh, in that herd for every 10% decrease is really costing $75 um, overall. So again, those weighting percentages go back to pregnancy, uh, percentages, uh, calving rate, keeping them alive, keeping them getting going to weaning and marketing. Average daily gain, I just kind of uh, add this one in. Uh, I know we have some producers that are also stocker operators or backgrounding um, that indicating, <clears throat> uh, um, you know, basically we've determined that the ending weight minus beginning divided by the number of days on feed. Now that again, that figure can vary greatly with genetics, um, the amount of feed they're getting, um, pasture condition, herd health. Um, you know, again, these goals should be based on end target weights and also keeping in mind, you know, the value of gain versus cost of gain. Um, you know, achieving those higher average daily gains may not, may not be the most cost efficient uh, way to go. So again, having those good set of records and data to, to analyze uh, is the way to determining, you know, are you being profitable within that operation? So again, you know, major factors that influ influence profitability of the cow herd, it's those annual costs, maintaining that overhead of fixed expenses, uh, keeping those down as low as possible. I mean, you know, do you have uh, pastures in, in good condition? Or, you know, on the flip side, as far as on, on your hay ground, um, you know, is it most efficient use of, of your time and labor, uh, or should they be converted back into pasture land, improved pastures, and purchase your hay? Uh, we looked at winning weights and also prices received for calves and calls, but really gets back to, again, probably the greatest thing that has, has the most effect over the operation is gonna be the, that winning percentage. Uh, we can focus on feed cost. You know, that's gonna be the largest variable expense of any operation. Uh, that's gonna include purchase feed. It's gonna also include that pasture expense and, and any purchase hay that you have. Um, you know, records should be really broken down. Now, if you look at a Schedule F form, you know, it's kind of had just kind of that, that feed expense. It's kind of had just kind of one, one category, but you really wanna break down feed costs, separate that out from, hat, um, any hay purchases and also any uh, pasture expenses as well. You want to break that down per cow or if you're on a stocker operator to uh, have it broke down per stocker head. And then again, when you're looking at controlling feed cost, you do want to control it, but you also want to maintain that nutrition, nutrient requirements. Um, on that beef herd and the cow calf operator ration, same thing with a dairy operation. You don't wanna cut back on your nutrient requirements. You wanna make sure that that cow, after she has that calf, is gonna be able to be bred back within a reasonable amount of time. And also to carry that calf all the way through. So again, reprodu reproduction performance shouldn't be impaired when you're looking at controlling feed cost. So I'm just gonna cover that, our, the focus of the beef gauge program on the farm gauge. Uh, the idea here is to, to help those, is, is a tool, another tool for the uh, beef operator to use to analyze their operation. So what we do within this, uh, the beef gauge program is we kind of compare your income and expenses to a group of beef producers within the state of Tennessee. So we look at the, uh, the revenue and expenses per exposed cow, per wean calf, and also per marketed animal. Now what, what we do, uh, we collect the data for individual farms, uh, we group that and put an average together, and that way an individual producer can see what the average is in the state, and if they're in line 
with those those costs. Um, this is the way they can a uh, producer can look out and kind of just see if, say, if they're spending more on feed than the average. You know, why is that? Is there changes that could be made? Is there another source that could be available? Uh, or on, on the revenue side, as far as, you know, you know, if your revenues are quite under what the state average is, you know, why is that? Are these other producers marketing through uh, video board sales? Are they um, doing aligned sales or direct marketing? you know, where those averages are coming into play. Basically, kind of see where your farm compares. And the information that is needed uh, to, to do a, really an accurate farm gauge or a beef gauge operation is through the income and expense report, if you have one. If not, we can also look at that information through a Schedule F tax form um, to detail that information. Now, with this program, uh, you know, it covers kind of a two different year period. So we look at, we focused on, for instance, 2019, the calves are sold in 2019. Uh, but we also have to include those number of cows that were exposed in two, 2018. So we kind of have to go back two years. Uh, having those totals, you adjust for any cows that came in out of that herd, how many calls that were sold, to get that total. And then looking at the calves that were sold this year, you know, how many calves are born to that crop and how many confirmed females were pregnant, uh, any calf deaths. And then also we want to factor in a number of retained heifers uh, within that herd. April, even May is a good time of year to do this because most uh, producers will have their tax forms together, their records together, so um, that information can be easily had. Now, typically to run a beef gauge program, it may take an hour or two to do by breaking down all the information, but I've run these on as little as 15 minutes with the producers that had that information together and broke down. So it doesn't take long at all to do. Uh, when we look at an example, uh, there's two parts of of, of the program, we kind of look at the farm production side. This is kind of get just better a look at um, what that producer is doing as far as do they have a defined calving season. Uh, for instance, they can have a, you know two calving seasons. They could have a late fall or winter calving season or early spring or, uh, calving season in fe February or April. Or those operators also have year-round uh, uh, calving seasons. So that, that information just gets kind of put in here on an individual basis. And we also look at some other different type of management programs that that op operator is doing. Whether it's gonna be do they castrate, um, uh, precondition pre their calves, uh, do they use AI, vaccinate the cows or calves and how many rounds. Uh, we look at, you know, do they use um, bull soundness exams uh, before the start of the season? Uh, do they buy their hay or do they raise it? And down kind of at the bottom here, we kind of look at, you know, how do you market your cattle? Um, majority is it in groups, individuals, uh, or do you, you know, utilize feeder calf sales or special sales? And as you kind of go through here, all you do is kind of look, click on the icon and uh, uh, the answers will be available to choose from, whether yes or no, or, or as far as uh, months of the year where majority of your calves are marketed. The second part of that first page, this is where you add in your numbers. Um, you know, how many cows and heifers are exposed? And then how many were confirmed pregnant? And right away, the number's gonna kind of pop up as far as the percentage. As you can see here, it's 89%. It's kind of in the red because we had a benchmark goal here of 95. Uh, the second part here is how many cows are born? And we're looking at the uh, calving percentage of 85%. Uh, versus the goal of 94. Add in death loss, how many were died before weaning, how many calves were weaned, and how many calves were marketed. So you can see those corresponding numbers will, will be uh, populated here on the right to get those totals as, as a percentage. Again, this is a great way for individual producers to capture that baseline of their operation. And if they make any 
management decisions or changes over the course of the year from one year to the next, they can see if it has any effect um, within their operation. Now, when we look at the financial, financial side of the Beef Gates program, you know, this is where those income statements come into play or your tax records, where we put in those totals of the total income that you have from calf sales or calls, call sales. And if you had any replacement uh, stock that you sold as we've added to the uh, revenue side. So you can see it kind of breaks it down again as, as revenue per exposed cow. And as you can see, you know, the, 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 the totals go up as we move to marketed calves, just because there's gonna be less marketed calves to break down that total. We also have, excuse me, we also have spots here if you have any dividends that you receive, maybe from the co-op or government payments. Uh, if you have any crops sold as well, you know, if you have some row crops or hay that you sold, we put that income here as well. So we get a total for the gross farm income. And we also have it broke down, separated just on the beef income side. So we get our totals along the bottom here if you're just looking on the beef income for exposed uh, per wing calf and also per marketed calf. So the final part here is looking at the variable um, expenses. Um, oftentimes when you look at, uh, it's kind of replicates what a Schedule F tax form looks like or what an income, uh, net income statement also looks about like as well. We have it broke down per uh, purchase feed, uh, purchased hay, fertilizer costs, these other general expenses, crop insurance, farm interest, if you had any higher labor, um, repair, maintenance of, of equipment, um, breaking it down to uh, utilities that you use on the farm, any veterinary expenses, and also marketing here as well. So this is where, again, you know, that bill from whether it's gonna be the sales bar and alliance, whatever cost you had in marketing will come into play. And as you can see, you know, further is broke down throughout per exposed cow and per marketed calf. And you kind of see where, um, you know, these individual costs come into play. So when we kind of come down to the total, we look at the total, total cash farm expenses for that exposed and see that $650 in this example. So you have that net income of um, $40. $4 in this example. Again, you know, if you only do this one time, there's value to it. However, over the course of um, two, three, four, five years down the road, you can kind of see the trend lines. You know, are you making improvements within that operation? And also how it compares to, to um, other operators in your area across the state. So it's a very a valuable program that uh, any size of, of operation can use. And again, when we kind of look back, you know, in our current state and within the beef industry, any way we can reduce cost, improve revenue side, it's going to be a plus for that individual producer. Now that's all that I had here today. Um, this program, um, any one of us in the managed program can help with, whether it's Kevin Ferguson, um, Alan Galloway, or myself, uh, please feel to reach out to any one of us. I have my contact information here, and we'd be glad to work with you. So with that, um, I'll open up with any questions that anyone may have.